poll of British military historians on who was Great Britain's greatest adversary throughout their long military history agreed that none other than George Washington was their most formidable opponent. Throughout the great long history of, of the British Empire, greater than Napoleon, greater than all the rest, how could that be? How was Washington such a formidable commander and what was the source of his greatness? I think we have to break it down into a number of different areas. There were some areas where he was stronger, there were some areas where he was not so strong. Starting with one area he was not quite so strong as, as a tactician. Now we have to remember Washington never had any formal. We have to remember that Washington never had any formal military training. He learned much of what he knew from two sources, from textbooks, and from simple experience in the field. In that way, he's like the quintessential American soldier. He learns on the job, but it takes him time to learn those painful lessons. By the time of the Revolutionary War, Washington has a good basic instinctive grasp of how to fight on the field, but he's not experienced enough to face down and defeat the better British command. William Howe is a far better tactician than George Washington is. And when it comes to defensive warfare in particular, Washington often allows himself to be outmaneuvered. Now, he has flashes of brilliance, particularly in the attack. And he's able to move very quickly and very decisively at points where the enemy least expects him. Uh, he does it on a number of occasions. The most obvious one being in the Princeton campaign in early 1777. That campaign is a model of the military art and Washington's quick movement, his decisive movement, and his instinctive grasp of where to move and where to go next. It's a wonderful campaign and, and he does it again at certain points. Uh, but often in the defense, Washington is hesitant and uncertain and does not move decisively. And I think that gets to the core of Washington as a military commander, that he is instinctively an aggressive commander. He's much better on the attack than he is on the defense. Now, nevertheless, tactics is not necessarily his strongest point. Washington's greatest gifts are, first of all, as an administrator, his understanding which dates back to the French and Indian War, that nothing matters more than fundamental necessities. Nothing matters more than fundamental necessities. Where are the troops going to get their clothing? Where are they going to get their food? Where are they going to find shelter? How will they get proper sanitation, proper medical care? Those are the things that matter to soldiers on a day-to-day -day basis and they think about them much, much more than how are we going to win the next battle. Soldiers don't think about, well, if we can go around the enemy's left flank, we may be able to defeat them in the next battle. They think about, oh, am I gonna get enough sleep tonight? Or, wow, I haven't had any rum in a while, or I'm really hungry, or I'm cold, or I'm hot. And Washington, as a veteran, who shared those hardships with his men in the French and Indian War and in the Revolutionary War understands that very well. So as a military commander, he makes sure that those fundamental necessities are available to his troops. And at times of crisis like Valley Forge in the winter of 1777 and 78, or the Morristown horrible encampment in the winter of 79 and 80, Washington zeroes in on the need for fundamentals, and that's how he keeps his army together, and that's why his troops love him so much. Because they have that sense that if they have to sacrifice, if they have to sacrifice their strength or their livelihood, they have to go through trials, or if they have to make the ultimate sacrifice, they know that with Washington as commander, 
those sacrifices will not be in vain because he does care about them as individuals and whether they live or die, whether they suffer or they don't suffer. And they're willing to follow him anywhere because of that. That is, I think, Washington's greatest quality as a military commander. He works, he has great dedication, he has a very powerful mind that's capable of memorizing and managing immense detail. I remember in the 18th century, there's no great military staff, there's no general staff that Washington can rely on for the details. He has to do this stuff himself. Uh, but he has such a capacity for hard work that that's what makes the difference. Washington also, as a commander, understands the need for personal relationships. So he understands it isn't enough simply to say, I need these supplies. But you have to know who to get those supplies from. And to do that, you need to talk with people. You need to forge individual relationships with members of Congress, with state governors, with local officials, with individual farmers, with individual human beings from all walks of life. Because ultimately, when it comes down to it, if your army is going to survive in the field, you need to have those people behind you. So Washington also has great physical bravery. His men know that he's willing to risk his life under fire. They've seen it multiple times. Uh, he's always visible on the front. He's always visible uh, in the greatest moments of trial, uh, where the firing is hottest. He'll often be there. Uh, he also has great personal charisma. He's physically imposing, he has a piercing gaze, he has that air of determination around him. But I would argue in some ways it's Washington's softer, softer side. It's Washington's softer side. It's his empathy for his men and their love for him that ultimately makes him a great military commander.